Hi, dear doers. Today we'll look at Construe Power, a renovation and construction firm specializing in business offices. Here are a few photos of what they do. They estimate the costs on a quotation, but charge based on the number of hours worked and the materials used. From the salespeople who quote an invoice to the renovation workers, let's look at how Odoo helps coordinate the stakeholders involved in the project. It usually starts with a contract that defines the cost of materials and each profile rate, workers, subcontractors, etc. Once the customer agrees on the details of the project, the plans can be prepared, then workers will do the actual renovation based on those plans, and every month the project manager invoices the customers based on materials and days of work. As said, a project usually starts at the sales department with the negotiation of a contract with the customer. So we're going to jump to Odoo, go straight to the sales application, and create an invoice. So I'm first going to choose my customer, and then I'm going to start adding some products right away. So here I'm going to need um, some work by my architect. And he's first going to work on the plans. And I expect that to take five days, so I'm changing the unit of measure here. And I'm going to add some more work for the architect who will do the work permits. Of course, we need the work permit before we can start really working. Um, and that's going to take, um, let's say, three days. Actually, I'm going to change this. I think the plans will take two days and the work permit will take five. All right, now we're going to add some workers who will work on the foundation. And I think that will take about 10 days. I want the foundation to be rock solid. I'm going to add some more workers who will work on the roof. And let's say that will take three days. The roof isn't in such terrible condition, so that's fine. Uh, now, something I want to point out is that the units of measure can also be shown in weeks or months for projects that take longer than 30 days, so just keep that in mind. All right, then the sales team will save the quotation and they'll send it to the customer. So I'm going to click on send by email. If there's no email set on the contact, I will be prompted to add an email as I am here. And then we can save and we can go ahead and send that email. Now, once it's sent to the customer, they can review it and they can either confirm the quotation through the portal using an electronic signature or the sales team can confirm it via the related button, which is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to click on confirm. And once the quotation is confirmed, the project and its tasks are automatically created. All right, so now that the quotation was approved and the contract negotiated, the team can start working on the project. So we're going to jump back to Odoo. We're going to go to the project application. And I'll see here that a new project has been created with the sales order reference. And if I go in the project, I'm going to see four tasks that are automatically created as well. And they're related to uh, our products, so those sales order lines. And the description that we set is actually going to be the title of the task. Now, I would like to prioritize a few of these. I want to prioritize the tasks that are assigned to my architects. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the stars to prioritize those tasks. Now, I'm also going to change them around. So plans, I'm going to say, is in progress. And the work permit, well, it's actually ready, but I'm going to move it to the quality check stage because it does need to be reviewed, especially the metrics. And I actually want to remind myself to do that. So I'm going to schedule an activity. And I can do that by clicking on the clock and clicking on Schedule Activity. So it's going to be a uh, to-do for myself. And let's make this for Monday. Review metrics. And we're going to schedule. Now I see that an activity has been scheduled. And once it's been done, I can click on the clock again and click on this check to finish it. All right, I also have an overview of how much time is expected or how much time is left for the task. So we'll be able to see that here for all of our tasks. And if I go to one, I'm going to be able to see those initially planned hours uh, right here. So that's the time that we set on the sales order in this case. I can also change the description of this task as well. I can do some other things like assign it to a specific person. Uh, I can assign it to myself. I can also add subtasks. So I can give this task a, a parent in order to organize my tasks um, differently. And let's say when the workers actually start working, they're ready to, and they're ready to um, register some timesheets. 
let's say they, they are already ready and they can do that here manually on the task itself. So I can add a line. It's automatically going to be assigned to me since I'm creating this, um, but we're going to add a description. So here I'll say plants and the duration is going to be 24 hours in this case. I can also change who it's assigned to if I would like to, but in this case, I'll keep it like that. Now I'll see that I have spent 24 hours on this task, 16 hours are remaining, and I have the progress uh, based on our initially planned hours. So I know that, okay, I've already done a large portion of this task and I only have 16 hours remaining based on what we originally proposed to the customer. So I'm going to manage my time um, based on that information. Now the remaining hours, again, we're going to be able to see that from the Kanban view. All right, so now I see that I have 16 hours left on this task. Now another cool option, if you don't want to manually register the timesheet that way, is you can also use the timer. So let's imagine I arrive on site. I just want to start the timer on the task by clicking on start here. The time will go on. I'll pause maybe if I want to take a lunch break. I can click on pause and then I can resume once lunch is over or my coffee break. Um, and this is nice because it will record a, a precise time. And then I can stop it at the end of the day um, once I'm leaving the site. And then I'll, it will automatically show me the duration. Here I have a minimum time configured, uh, 15 minutes, but we can change that, of course. Um, and I'm going to add the description. Did this. Not very uh, profound, but it works there. And then we'll see our progress and the time we spent and the hours remaining, of course. So that is just a convenient tool um, for uh, your employees. Now that's it essentially um, for projects. Teams can prioritize tasks, record their hours while keeping an eye on the remaining time for their tasks. Activities can be scheduled and new tasks or subtasks can still be added at any time or be assigned to anybody in the team. But now let's say that they've reached the end of the month and it's time to invoice the customer. To do so, they need information about what should be invoiced and what shouldn't be. And this is a task for the sales team. So we're going to jump back over to the sales application. And I'm going to go to my sales order, order number 28 here. All right, and I'm going to see that the time that I just registered uh, on the tasks, it was automatically encoded here. And we're going to see that under the delivered section. And you're also going to notice that these lines are blue. And that means that we have delivered some time. So we've actually worked um, and it, that time can be invoiced. So when something is ready to be invoiced, you will see those lines in blue. And what's really nice from this sales order view is you have access to a lot of different things. This is very convenient for your salespeople. So we'll be able to see all of our tasks, the project overview, as well as all of the specific um, hours recorded. So this is really, really useful uh, for your salespeople. But that's not all. Projects like this also require physical material like cement or wood and that's where the purchase application is going to uh, come into action. The project manager will create purchase orders from that app. So let's go to purchase and I'm going to create a new purchase order. So I'm first going to select my vendor. We're going to select wood corner. All right, I can add my order deadline um, and I can also see that this vendor has always been on time. So I'm not actually going to ask for a confirmation from them. So they're super reliable. Um, let's go ahead and change the receipt date. Um, so again, I don't want to ask for a confirmation. I don't need to follow up because I mean, I'm 100% on time. I think they're good to go. So we're going to uncheck this and I'm going to add the product. So we're going to add some wood panels. And for this project, I will add 30. And I'm also going to add the analytic account because I want to associate um, that project, uh, that sales order um, with this purchase order. And later on, we will uh, reinvoice the customer for this item, but we'll see that in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and save this and confirm. And once we confirm that RFQ is going to turn into a purchase order, 
And uh, the responsible teams will um, know exactly what to do. They'll know that they're expecting some products um, for a specific date, as we have set here, um, and that a bill will arrive as well. And they will also be able to register both the reception of the products and the bill from here. So we have create bill and receive products. So let's receive those products now quickly. All right, just like that. So they do have that option from the purchase order, which is really nice. So now let's imagine that the accounting department has received the bill from the vendor and we want to be sure that everything is correct. We want to double check everything. But the first step is to record the bill. So what I'm not going to do is actually record it from, directly from the accounting application in this case. All right, then we're going to go to accounting vendors, bills. I'm going to create a new bill. So first your accountant will add the vendor. And once the vendor is added, we're actually going to be able to autocomplete the bill, which will save everyone a ton of time. So we have this autocomplete field, and we'll be able to choose the correct purchase order that is associated with the bill that we received from the vendor. So let's go ahead and select this one. All right, we have the correct product. I even see the analytic account that's associated, the quantity, um, the price, everything looks good. So we can say, all right, um, seems seems to be good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save and confirm this and then we can complete the flow. Uh, we can go ahead and pay um, our vendor and do everything that we need to do. So we'll create the payment. All right. Now, a lot of materials were used um, during the project. Therefore, we need to know what should be reinvoiced to the customer. And at Construe Power, this is also a job for the sales representatives. But what's great is that they don't actually have to register that in information themselves. It's automatically encoded on the sales order. So we see that wood panel has been added uh, because we added that um, analytic account. So everything was associated and it's been added here um, to the SO. Um, and we also see that it's ready to be invoiced as well. So uh, that was super convenient. So now it's the end of the month. And Country Power's team is ready to invoice for everything that's happened during the last few weeks. Once again, only a few clicks are needed. So we're going to jump back. I can create the invoice here. Um, but if I want to invoice or if I want to create invoices for all of my um, sales order that are ready to be invoiced at the end of the month, I simply need to go to to invoice orders to invoice, select my orders action and create invoices. I can even select a specific timesheet period. I'm going to create and view the invoice. All right. And just like that, now we have an invoice. Let's go ahead and select the invoice um, related to the sales order. Only those items that were ready to be invoiced So the time that we delivered um, and those wood panels. Um, those have all been added to the invoice, but not the other things that we haven't delivered yet. For example, the workers hadn't started, uh, haven't started working, and so we won't invoice uh, for their time as they haven't spent any time. So it just took me a few seconds to have a complete and professional invoice as we see here, um, and then I can confirm it. And again, send and print, register the payment. Um, if I send the invoice, what's great is I also have the option to send by post. So let's add the email again. I want to be sure that I have that properly saved. Um, we can send by email, we can print, and I can send by post by clicking this option, and that will use stamps, which we can purchase through Odoo. And we have the correct address, but in this case, I'm just going to send by email. So we'll click on send just like that. So it's easy, fast, and interesting, right? So how is this possible? How can we make this work in Odoo? Well, there are um, a few things that we have to do to automate some processes. So we're going to go back to the DB. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to products um, and I'm going to remove the can be sold uh, filter and I'm going to look for my architect. All right. So I have this product um, set up as a service, first of all. So this will um, create tasks rather than a delivery order when I have it set up this way. I'm also going to click on edit so we can see everything that I'm doing. 
And then when I'm on the sales tab, you're gonna see that I have the invoicing policy set to timesheet on tasks. Um, that's how we want to invoice our customer. And we also um, will create tasks in the sales orders project. And we also have a project template. So I created a project template so that every time a, um, a project is created with this product, it will have um, specific columns. So I don't have to add and customize the project every single time. So that's really nice. Um, we're gonna save this. I'm gonna go back to products. And now we're gonna look at our physical products. So that was our service, um, but let's go ahead and look at our wood panels. Okay, let's click on edit again here. Again, it's a storable product because it is a product that uh, we purchase and store. We also wanna be sure that it can be expensed. Doing this will allow the product to be re-invoiced to the customer. Um, and we also want to go to the purchase tab, be sure we have a vendor selected, which here we have our beautiful wood corner who we know is very reliable. All right, we also want to be sure under sales that we have our invoicing policy set to delivered quantities. Um, now, since the product is resold, it's going to be based on the sales price rather than at cost. And uh, again, I have it set to delivered quantities because as the customer isn't ordering it themselves, um, we're only going to uh, invoice them once we have delivered the product. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. I like everything the way it is set up now, so I won't change anything. And that is how you handle construction projects from A to Z using Odoo. I'm Amy Caroline, and I wish you a lovely day.